What's up guys, Eric here and welcome to Rant and Preview, the weekly mega video where we talk about all of our favorite DC shows on the CW. So careful for spoilers if you're not caught up with all of those shows. You've been warned, let's get into it. So let's start with Supergirl and it's numbers time. So where did the episode Starcrossed add up in live viewership? Well, we're sitting at 2.07 million live viewers. Wow. Um, do I even need to say it? Okay, sure, why not? This is a season and series low for Supergirl. They are setting more records here with Kara and the Team Supreme at the DEO. Anyway, this week's episode is titled Distant Sun, and here's a synopsis. A large bounty is put out on Supergirl, and aliens from far and near attack National City intent on taking out the Woman of Steel. Alex and Maggie run into Maggie's ex-girlfriend, Emily, who is in town for a week. Hank gets an interesting order from President Marston. So I just have to mention something because it's so funny to me. One of the lines uh, Supergirl says in the trailer for this week's episode is, I'm the girl of steel. I don't bend. I don't break. I don't stand down for anyone. Yet just last week, when she approached the Daxum ship, she was asked to stand down by mon -El and she did it. So... Yeah, lines like that come off really corny when they don't really mean anything. Now, this week's episode is directed by Kevin Smith, and I'm usually pretty optimistic about his stuff, but after his last uh, Supergirl episode, I don't expect much this time, to be honest. However, I do like the premise of this episode. We have bounty hunters or possibly just some random aliens looking for some quick cash chasing down Supergirl. So the question is, who put out the bounty? Well, there are only two logical options here. The first being mon -El's parents. As we already know, they don't like Supergirl and have a good reason to eliminate her from the series. The other is the president because we also know the president is secretly an alien and is making an appearance this week. So it could be either of those two. I am pretty excited to see Linda Carter back on the show as I think she did bring a certain level of nostalgia to the episode she was in earlier in the season. So happy to see her back. I also need to see if we end up paying off the alien arc with her. Um, I have been wondering when or if we would ever see her come back and bring that back into the fold because we were never really explained why the president was also an alien. So hopefully we cover that this week as the series is rapidly coming to a close. Did I say series? I meant the season <laughs> is coming to a close because we are getting another season of Supergirl. So it's not the end of the series. I misspoke. In the trailer, we also see Supergirl fighting mon -El. Oddly enough, she isn't in her super suit. She's dressed in her street clothes. This means that it happens out of the public eye. So whatever's going on, I don't think it's directly related to this bounty situation. I'm also curious if mon -El is doing this because he wants to, or if he's doing it because of the president's strange orders, or something to do with his parents. Maybe they have some sort of control over him. I don't know, it seems really odd here. Uh, also, we get more Sanvers actions for you Sanver, Sanvers lovers out there. If you like this ship, you're gonna get more of that in this episode. It seems like a three-way love triangle. We're gonna meet Maggie's ex-girlfriend, Emily. There's so much drama in this relationship. You know, now that I think about it, from a viewer's standpoint, we don't get to see much of the good times they have. It's almost always drama. I think we've had like one episode where, well, even in the episode where they had like the little Valentine's thing, there was a bunch of arguing in that one too. So yeah, we really, we really never get to see any of their good times. Uh, so what do you guys think? Looking forward to this week's Supergirl and the bounty hunters coming for her? Or are you more interested in the Sanvers stuff? Let me know in the comments below. Okay, so let's jump into the Speed Force and talk about the Flash and talk about their numbers. So last week's episode, Duet, was a mini Glee reunion. So did the buzz around that pull in viewers for the Flash? Well, it looks like it because the Flash was at 2.71 million live viewers. This is way up from the previous week, you guys. So regardless of what I thought or what you thought about the episode, it looks like enough people were curious about it to tune in and sing along. So let's talk about this week's episode. It's titled Abracadabra, and here is a synopsis. 
After Flash battles Abracadabra, a villain from Earth-19, he makes a tempting offer. Release him and Abracadabra will reveal Savitar's true identity. Desperate to save Iris, Barry considers taking the deal, but Gypsy breaches in to capture the villain for her own reasons, and during the melee, Abracadabra manages to escape. Barry is furious that Gypsy interfered, but Gypsy refuses to back down, forcing Sisko to take sides. Meanwhile, Julian is still a bit cold towards Caitlyn, but when she's severely injured in a battle with Gypsy, he rushes to her side. So this week's promo looks and sounds great. I'm extremely excited about Abracadabra coming to the show and giving us what looks to be one of our most epic episodes. So what do we know about him? He's from Earth-19, but not just Earth-19. He's from the 64th century on Earth-19. So just imagine the kind of technology we've seen over at Legends and the stuff we've seen from Eobard on The Flash and then think even more future than that. This is going to be some absolutely crazy tech. The tech will be so advanced that it will seem like magic to everyone. We should also take note that Abracadabra says that he has information on Savitar. Not just any information, but the identity of Savitar. This is really strange to me. This has my mind just going crazy, right? Because if he knows who Savitar is, then has he been to Earth-1 before? Meaning Abracadabra. If Savitar is someone that he knows that is not from Earth-1, does that mean Savitar is from Earth-19? Does that mean Savitar is from Earth-19 present, past, or the 64th century? It's crazy. And does this mean that the armor Savitar wears is future tech? Could this mean that Savitar is the Barry Allen from Earth-19? Is Savitar the Barry Allen from the future Earth-19? What happened to the Iris West on Earth-19? And does Gypsy know anything about this? It's, it's just, my mind is racing all over the place. What does Abracadabra know and what is he willing to reveal? It's going to be a very hype episode. It also makes me wonder, does Gypsy know something about Savitar that she's not telling Team Flash? Because if she doesn't want to even give Abracadabra a chance to give up that information, what is the reason why? I mean, I get it. She's after him because breaching different Earths from Earth-19 is highly illegal on that Earth. I understand that part. But if he has information that could save someone's life, someone on Team Flash that she's pretty much, you know, chill with, I don't understand why she wouldn't want to help them gather that information. And again, thinking about Abracadabra, this guy is from the future, a future Earth-19, which is it already vastly different from the Earth we know, but it's also an Earth where the lineage of Barry Allen and Iris West could be very different. Will this have anything to do with the Accelerated Man? Will this tie in with the photo that Gypsy gave the Accelerated Man before he ran off from our team? There's so many questions that could possibly be answered this week. Then we also have the story with Caitlin and Julian. They're still bickering, and honestly, I hope this doesn't lead back to having them in a romantic relationship. I'm, I'm not a fan of of that shipping at all. Uh, also from the promo shots, it looks like the team may be after Caitlyn for some reason, or maybe she's caught in the crossfire. Don't really know what's going on with that. And it looks like she gets shot this week and Julian has to save her life. So I'm wondering how this will all play out. If anything, this will set up the Killer Frost episode we should get before the finale. Uh, so I'm kind of excited to see what happens with that. What do you guys think? Do you think we'll get any big reveals this week? Like is Abracadabra going to reveal Savitar? Maybe a name drop? I don't know. Or do you think he's playing everyone? Do you think Abracadabra is just simply playing everyone? Uh, let me know down in the comments below. Okay, so it's time to talk Arrow. This is really painful, guys, okay? These numbers are painful. Arrow didn't just slide a bit in the ratings this week. It dropped like a brick from like the top of a 50-story building. Uh, Kaipushan only scored 1.38 million live viewers. Wow. This is a new low for Arrow. I'm honestly shocked. Most people that I've talked to would agree the last two episodes of Arrow have easily been the best of the season. So I have no clues why the ratings are dropping so low. I'm going to assume maybe the mature subject matter made a difference or the fact that it was maybe a primarily flashback filled episode. I don't know. I mean, are you guys, I mean, I'm feeling like Arrow is much better now than it has been in a long time, but these numbers are really scary to me. Uh, leave your theories in the comments below because I'm really enjoying Arrow at the moment. Uh, this week's episode is titled Disbanded, and here is a synopsis. 
Diggle and Felicity are shocked by Oliver's decision to call on the Bratva to help take down Prometheus. Concerned the Bratva may overstep, Diggle has a hard conversation with Oliver about what happens if things go south. Meanwhile, Felicity learns something shocking at Helix. This seems like it's going to be a very deep episode of Arrow. Coming back after the torture of Oliver Queen, he said he was going to break up Team Arrow and stop being Green Arrow. I think it's pretty clear, though, that that's not really what's happening. It does seem like he's going to tell the team to stay out of his way, uh, whatever plans he may have for Prometheus. So definitely going to add some drama there. So with Oliver calling on the Bratva, that means most likely we've seen the bulk of the flashbacks, uh, specifically regarding uh, Anatoly, I think because he's going to be in present day, maybe that will end those flashbacks. Um, this is bringing everything kind of full circle for this season, leading up to the big finale this year. So everything from like season one till now is sort of all wrapping up here. Again, I think everything we saw last week in the Russian flashbacks and present day stuff is coming to a head together at the end of the season, because we're really close to the end. So from the synopsis in the trailer, I think this week Diggle and Felicity will take charge of the team and try to intervene with Oliver to stop him from killing someone. Uh, Diggle most likely thinks that this is Oliver crossing a line, a line that he drew in the sand a long time ago. Instead of just cap capturing Adrian, he is actually trying to kill Adrian. It's a really strange situation and I'm excited to see how Diggle will handle all of this. And as far as Felicity learning something shocking at Helix, either it's that they're a evil organization, which I kind of think we all feel they are, but uh, she might also learn who is in charge. And I have no idea who's in charge of Helix, but I think it may be a pretty important piece of information. One of the characters we're going to meet this week is a man by the name of Amir. Now in the comics, Amir was the name of a character uh, who was the commander of the world army, a line of defense after a major apocalypse invasion. His name was Amir Khan. So is this uh, is Helix the TV version of the World Army from the comics? It's going to be kind of interesting if that's the case. Also, Stephen Amell has said that what's going on this season will help draw, drive Oliver and Felicity back together. What that means, I don't know. He wasn't very specific, but does that mean that we're going to see Olicity again? Are they going to be a couple? And I wonder what this means for Susan Williams. I mean, do you think she'll still be upset with Oliver even after he saved her life? Or do you think Oliver's going to call it quits because he's like, I can't put you in danger, so we have to cut off? I, I don't know. What are you guys the most excited about to see in this week's episode? Let me know in the comments below. Okay, so let's wrap this all up and talk some numbers for Legends. So Fellowship of the Spear saw a huge increase in numbers from the previous week's episode. Legends is back to their normal numbers with 1.72 million live viewers. And I'm really happy to see this. It's been almost a month since they saw numbers like that. But honestly, they deserve it in my opinion. Last week was a very solid episode with tons of payoffs for the whole season. So again, I'm very happy to see them on the upswing. Uh, this week is the results of what happened last week and it's titled Doom World and here is a synopsis. After obtaining the Spear of Destiny, the Legion of Doom rewrites reality, leaving the legends changed, perhaps forever. Frightfully, the legends and the world's hope rest with Rory, but being the hero is not easy for him. Meanwhile, there's tension within the Legion of Doom and the reason why the Spear of Destiny needs to be destroyed is revealed. Okay, so let me try and explain this as best I can for you guys. When the Legion of Doom used the spear last week to rewrite reality, the only people who remembered what happened or who should remember what happened is the Legion itself. They all took part in changing reality, so outside of those people who actually touched the spear, no one else should know what happened. So this leaves Heatwave as the sole member of Legends who would have remembered what was changed. Because you gotta remember, Captain Cold was not the one with the team. So Heatwave was the only one who's actually been with the Legends that will remember anything that happened up until that point. So as far as changes to reality, the reason why this is so different from changing history is they rewrote the world in the way they wanted it to be. Like I said in a previous video about this, the changes that are made here are more significant. It's not like they simply changed the path of someone's life by altering time. They changed who that person is at the core. For example, Rip is from the future, right? Well, by using the spear, they can turn Rip into someone from present day and give him a life that they want him to have, completely negating the need for time travel in Rip's history because he is actually from present day. They could do this. I know it's a bit confusing, but I'm certain the Legends will try to explain it in their own Legends way this week, so I don't think it's gonna be too complicated. What I am most excited about this week is we get to see other versions 
of our favorite characters. We're going to see each member of Legends in a vastly different role in their lives, while the Legion has positions of power and means. We also saw some concept art of Felicity in a costume. I'll link it here. Um, so we should see that this week. I wonder if her code name is actually going to be Pandora. I'm really curious about that. Are you guys excited as I am about Legends this week? I really am. And also there's going to be a little hiccup between the Legion, which will probably lead to Heatwave breaking off and trying to be the hero. I think it's going to be great. I'm really excited about this week's uh, Legends of Tomorrow. Uh, so keep in mind, guys, uh, this week will be the last episode for a month for Supergirl, The Flash, and Arrow. They're all going to be on break again for about three or four weeks. I know, it sucks. However, Legends will have another episode next week to wrap up their season because their season is much shorter than everybody else's. So we won't have any of the other DC shows for about three to four weeks. Uh, yeah, yeah, again, it sucks, but I mean, what can we do about it? I will be releasing content over the break, so don't worry. You'll still get stuff from me to keep you guys busy until all of our shows come back. Uh, so let me know in the comments, what are you guys looking forward to the most this week? And which shows are you the most excited about? I have to say, I'm pretty hyped for Arrow, and I'm really excited to see Legends leading up to this big finale. I think Doom World is going to be a fun episode. I'm just ready to really enjoy Legends this week. I think it's going to be absolutely fantastic. Uh, so anyway, guys, that's all I got for you today. Take care. Have a great day. Have a great week. And I will catch you later.